For several years, I drove all over the state of Florida making over 700 final expense presentations per year. Yeah, believe it or not. So you could say that I've made a few presentations and might actually know what I'm talking about. Today, I'm gonna share a lot of information, including a few things that must be done in every single final expense sales presentation. I'm also gonna go over the best way for you to get in front of enough people to make this work, and we're even gonna get into the most effective way to deal with objections both upfront and at the end, you know, like when the client hesitates on buying, you know, believe it or not, even after they've admitted that that they absolutely want and need the insurance. If you're new, we suggest using the sales presentation materials that are in our free new agent file. Just stick around until the end of the video. I'm gonna show you how to get this for yourself. And yeah, guys, this is the perfect time to smoosh down on that like button and subscribe if you're new. We're putting out new insurance sales content and final expense sales training videos like all the time. For those of you guys who are selling final expense over the phone remotely, we highly recommend going to the page linked above for more information on our remote final expense training and top producer sales platform. You're gonna be able to get like 20 to over 30 appointments booked on your calendar every single day of people that are expecting a quote for affordable burial insurance. With all that behind us, let's get into it. There are three things that must be done in every one of your final expense sales presentations, whether you're selling over the phone or like on a belly to belly basis. Number one, you must direct the prospect to not only admit that they have a need for the insurance, but to get into a conversation about both the beneficiary and how the insurance will prevent the beneficiary from getting stuck with the prospect's debt and help relieve the burden and the responsibility of like the burial or the cremation costs. The last thing that I'm gonna do is leave my loved ones stuck with the burden of paying for my funeral after I die. And I'm assuming that you feel the same way that I do. Mrs. Client, is that right? And that is just one of the statements that I make during my final expense sales presentation. Number two, once we've uncovered the need for the insurance and gotten the prospect to admit this, I wanna separate myself from what other insurance agents are selling, you know, from what they're seeing on TV, you know, the phone calls they're getting and the stuff that these folks are getting in the mail. You wanna explain that you don't work for any specific company, so you don't have to push expensive insurance products and that you're not just another insurance broker, but you do have access to specialized plans that were specifically developed for folks that don't have a lot of money and are either on a low fixed income or just don't make much money at their job. Mr. Client, one of the things that I'm able to do is make my personal guarantee that after I leave today, no one's ever gonna be able to come through that front door and show you a better price or lower monthly premium on a burial life insurance policy. Another important thing to add into like this part of the presentation is a clear and, how do I say this, concise explanation of whole life insurance versus term life insurance. This is when you wanna break out the benefits of whole life insurance that is in the new agent file and read the whole thing out loud to the potential client line by line. The third thing that you're gonna wanna do in all of your presentations is sell the prospect a competitive product that will accept the form of payment that that prospect has. Unfortunately, about 25% of our target market does not have a checking account and uses like one of those refillable debit cards or the Social Security Direct Express card to receive their monthly benefits and or even the direct deposits from their job. Here's where things get a little dicey and the balancing act begins. First, you wanna always make sure that you know what form of payment the client will be using before you make the mistake of pricing out a product that doesn't accept that form of payment. Second, people that use those refillable debit cards are not usually like you and me. They're not as responsible. Let's just say they're not responsible enough to balance a checking account in most cases, and therefore don't even have one. So the last thing that you wanna do is let them tell you what day to set up the bank draft. Look, you're the professional. You absolutely need to let them know that you're gonna be setting up the payment to automatically draft on the exact day that they receive their social security monies. Since a majority of people that use these type of debit cards are so irresponsible that they won't even make like three payments for their insurance before canceling or before allowing the policy to lapse, 
I don't suggest that you jump through like a bunch of hoops to try to get those people first day coverage or even the best price. Thing is, it most likely won't matter anyway, but that's entirely up to you. You know, it's your job as the insurance agent to decide what it's worth to help who and what you're willing to do for those folks. When it comes to objections, there are two main reasons that people make excuses not to buy from you when you make your original final expense sales presentation. It almost always comes down to trust and or cost. This is why it's super important to both build lots of rapport during your presentation, your, your sales presentation, and to make it clear that one of the things that you're gonna be able to do today is find an amount of insurance that they can afford starting today. Of course, this won't eliminate objections at the end of the presentation. And simple fact, guys, like half of the people you speak with are still gonna tell you that they need time to think about it, or that maybe they just need a few days, or they need to speak with their kids first before making any type of financial decision. Which is why I teach a three-step process to overcome all these objections and make it easier for the client to simply help you with the application process and set up the first bank draft for later. Bottom line, you need to accept that about half of your sales will come from folks that make excuses and give you multiple objections. And therefore, be prepared guys. And Here's the thing, you need to know exactly what to say and what to do when this happens. Simply said, final expense sales is not an easy or a cheap way to make a living, but it is a great way to earn six figures if you're A, not afraid to invest at least like $1,000 per week into your advertising or your leads budget, and B, have a combination of a strong work ethic and at least a little bit of talent. For face-to-face -face sales, you're gonna need to have at least 50 exclusive leads per week. The more the better. And if you're selling remotely, you know, like from the comfort of your own home, you're gonna wanna either purchase one of those calendar funnels Facebook appointment systems from somebody who can actually set it up for you, you know, ready to go, or you're gonna wanna get with an agency like ours that actually does this for our agents at like a fraction of the cost. If you'd like free telesales training, just check out the link above. This thing's gonna take you over to our three-part series, which covers like everything you need to do remote telesales successfully. For a copy of the free new agent file, you know, that I mentioned earlier in the video, just email me at doug at ufesonline.com. If you'd like more information on our remote agent teleplatform, which is how the agents get like 20 to over 30 appointments per day, just shoot me an email at that same address. Remember guys, when you put the needs of your clients first, everything else will usually fall right into place. Now get out there or put on that headset and do something good for someone today. Happy hunting.